This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out for some training. Matt is always always in the in the gym of automotive repair, trying to get better at what he does. So he's out for training, and and, and I kind of miss him. He and I have not been together in six weeks. Man, it feels like an eternity. So anyway, but uh, together, Matt and I are the KTR Car Guys. We're heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you got car questions, we've got car answers. So we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also get a hold of us by text at 411923. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Road Map, I've been saying we, even though Matt's not here, but I have someone else in his place. I've got the guys from uh, SNS Tire. I've got Brad, I've got Rob, and I've got Dan, and they are members of the Bumper to Bumper Radio Network. And so they're gonna. I figure we talk about tires today, right? Hey, that's awesome. Sounds great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, uh, so for sure, tires are, are one of those things where uh, you know it's. You know, you said it right before the show, is that people come in and they're going to buy a set of tires. And, you know, cost is certainly always a, always part of the deal. But they say, well, you know, the, the car came on with, say, a set of Michelins on it. And they decide to save a few bucks and buy XYZ tire. Next thing you know, their gas mileage has fallen off. <laughs> and, I, you know, that's something I don't even really think about it on tires. Uh, and, and so... Tires are, are one of those things that we all have to deal with, you know. You guys here is taking calls about questions. Some guy's calling about air conditioning. You're like, I never have an air conditioning problem. I don't need to know what they're talking about. But tires, you absolutely have to know what we're talking about because we all got them on our car. I just bought a set of tires, and I think I spent a 1000 bucks, and it was expensive. But I, I, I actually bought, a, I think, was a better set of tires because I don't, I don't like to mess around when it comes to tires. You know, a good pair of shoes will cost you 150 bucks. So what should a tire that goes 40,000 miles cost you? So, uh, and the other thing too, uh, by the way, uh, Dan, which which location of SNS Tire are you at? You kind of you kind of float a little bit. I float between the stores. And you guys have three locations. Correct, all on the west side. And you got those of you listen to us. Bumper to Bumper Radio is a show, you know, where we help you with with your car, but we're also a network of auto shops. And some of the favorite shops in Bumper to Bumper Radio is SNS Tire because it is a good old fashioned family owned tire shop. And uh, What's cool about the family-owned thing, you know, I've gone to big chains or big box stores, and if there's a problem, i got to talk to a manager, then i got to talk to his manager's manager who's got a manager above him to get to somebody else who puts me on hold and doesn't call me back for a week. Is, is that going to happen at your guys' store? Not at all. No, <laughs> we're very accessible. Most of the time we'll be in the store, one of us or all of us will be in a particular store, making sure everything's getting handled properly. You know, it's, it's really good to have you guys as part of the network. What are, to, for our consumers, I asked you before the show, frequently asked questions. Give me the number one frequently asked questions. Brad, something you get every day at the counter when you're selling tires. Uh, tire pressure. Tire pressure. What should, uh, what should I be running? It says uh, max pressure on the tire, and then the car also has a uh, pressure rating as well. Okay, so tire pressure. So max tire pressure. Do you guys ever set tire pressure to max? Only if the sticker's gone and we don't know what's supposed to be in there. Okay, so it's that a, might, might be an example where you set it to max. So the sticker that you're talking about that's in the door jam, right? Right. So that's where they should be looking. And that was a big deal. You know, we were talking before the show about the tire pressure monitoring lights, right? That's the next thing. That's the little yellow horseshoe that pops up. It's not actually a horseshoe. It's a cross-section of the tire. Right. <laughs> but most people know what cross-section means. <laughs> But that's actually that's the inflation of the tire, and that's I would say that's probably pretty high on the ignore list. Would you guys agree? Oh yeah, we see it all the time. <laughs> if you just put a black piece of tape over that, that really <laughs> fixes fixes the issue. You don't have to worry about it. Should we ignore that light? No, and most of the time it's just something as easy as as uh, setting the pressure to the door placard, and that light will go off usually by itself. The uh, it always comes up in the winter time, right? The first cold snap. Everybody's tire lights go on. Why does that happen? Variation in temperature, outside temperature and ambient temperature. So you guys may not realize that listening, but your your tire pressure changes based on temperature. So that's why they say check your tires cold, right? Because that's that's where you want to set them because they're going to heat up as soon as you get going down the freeway. Do you know how hot a tire gets when it's 115 degrees out in Phoenix? 
Well, that's kind of an interesting question because, um, you know, those uh, laser oh, yeah. temperature gauges are readily available. I think you can buy them for 10 or 15 bucks nowadays. And uh, they'll get, I think they'll approach 180 degrees uh-huh. on a... On a 115 degree day. Wow, because this is the time of year where you start to see the carcasses show up on the side of the road. <laughs> you know, all the all the dead tires come sprinkling up, and that's when the guy in front of you moves over a lane real quickly to to avoid it, and you take it smack dab in the middle of your radiator. <laughs> that's that's a bad day on the highway. So, but rubber, I mean, rubber at some point, what temperature does it vulcanize? I'm going to, not being an engineer, right. engineer I'm going to guess uh, 200 degrees is probably about that magic number, okay. 190, 200. So by having a tire that's low on pressure, what's going to happen to it? If it was normally 180 degrees, right? It's going to get it's going to get superheated. So you need that air in the tire to prevent friction, so that little yellow light is pretty important, and you don't want to ignore it. So so the tire pressure, what should it be inflated to? So what uh, what Brad is talking about is in every, it's the driver's door, right? Every driver's door, there's a little sticker with a little grid. It says front tire should be this, rear tire should be that. Go with what that is. Now, the other thing, that th- th- that sticker is based on the tires that came with the car, correct? Yes, it is. So when someone goes in with a, uh, you know, just a regular, I don't know, do they even talk about plies of tires anymore? On trucks, it's important. On cars, you don't see it much. Not so much. But if you change, really, the, the tire and go with something other than factory, those numbers are probably not good numbers anymore. I'm not a big fan of changing anything that the, in, the factory designed. That's just me because I think they've already engineered it. They've already done their homework. Why do I want to go completely away from that? You know, if I had a six-ply tire, why would I want a ten-ply tire? There may be a reason. Maybe I tow something really heavy, but maybe I should just go buy a three-quarter ton truck <laughs> that, that has a ten-ply tire on it. So uh, how, I mean, so you grew up robbing the tire business. Yes, I did. How, how, I mean, we how, started 41 years ago, and I'm in my early 50s, so I was in the store pretty early on, cleaning bathrooms and uh, right. doing all that stuff. My brother also. Yeah? It did. When, Brad, when did they drag you into the shop? Oh, I, I came in on Saturdays when I was about 10 years old to okay. empty trash cans, sweep oh, up yeah. floors. Until the child labor came after you guys, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's really really cool. Bussing bussing tires and you know that was my first job was changing tires, and I, I absolutely loved it. I looked they're not even around anymore, but back in the day it was Ranch Tire. It was an independent Goodyear location in Scottsdale, and uh, you know changing tires and I changed oil, and uh, I was it was a good thing there was somebody looking over my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> back then. But uh, so you you know you're talking about let's just say someone's out in the, in the West Valley they live out there maybe they're not familiar with you guys S and S Tire you can find them at bumper to bumper and one of the things uh, Rob that I heard you say three times today was that oh we'll get them done quicker so you guys are kind of in and out as far as the tire shop pride ourselves is, is in and out um, some of our competitors are quite a bit busier and they have uh, sometimes they have a problem getting cars in and out I've heard three four hours is not uncommon yeah. Um, that that's not going to happen at our place. I mean, if 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 it's a busy Friday before Memorial Day weekend, you could have a little problem. But we'll tell you that up front. But most right. of the time, we'll get you in and out. And I've been out to all three of your locations. Now you guys are are, are tires, but you guys do service work as well. We do oil we change do. repairs. We do. Um, Dan, go ahead and chime in anytime you feel like it. But we do um, tires is is our mainstay. That's where we started mm-hmm. early on in our in our company's history and then uh, we started doing alignments and brakes got very good at that and then we started picking up drivability problems and so we're pretty much full service other than you know body shop type repairs okay so the other thing we talked about before the show is tire rotation because there's a lot of people listening how often should a tire be rotated danny um the manufacturer says that uh most manufacturers say that uh 7500 mile increments but uh we really have found that uh, 5,000 mile increments uh, work best. Just a okay. nice, nice round number to work with. And that's what I that's what I do with my own car. You know, I change my oil every 5,000 miles, uh, and I use synthetic in my car. That's what I like to use. And it, by doing it every 5,000 miles, I, I rotate the tires at the same time. So it's it's just happening. They just happen at the same time, and it makes them last a lot longer. I think handle better. And then for all-wheel drive cars, for those of you listening, all-wheel drive cars, people wreck their car by running you know different 
different sizes front to rear, and that's going to happen if we just wear out one side, you know, one side of the vehicle because they don't all necessarily wear evenly. So we want to keep those wearing very evenly to protect, you know, for my line of work, the transmission and the transfer case. And uh, a tire, when they start to get above a half an inch of variation front to rear, it starts to put tax on the transfer case. So that's just a little side note that comes up. But if you've ever seen a, a car that's uh, melted down because they only bought two tires on the all-wheel all drive car, I don't know if you guys have ever run into that where somebody had done that. Uh, pretty, it's actually at a transmission shop we see it quite often. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but uh, you know the other thing that comes up this time of year we're seeing the carcasses on the side of the road and and so if you think gosh when was the last time I bought tires? If someone bought a new car and it's now it's now two three years old and it's got thirty five thousand miles on it they're thinking about tires right? Usually I think uh, you know and tires have gotten a lot better just in the last few years they've gotten a lot better. The um, quality of a tire is much higher. And so 40,000 miles is probably about average on a set of tires that came on the car. Sometimes it's even more than that. Sure, sure. So you should be, if you're kind of in that in that range, or maybe your car's got 80,000 miles, you're ready for your second set of tires. You know, it's about to get really hot out, and right now is a really good time for tires. The other thing that comes up this time of year is batteries. Uh, you know, if batteries in Arizona don't tend to last as long as they do in nice climates like California, where it's all nice, or at least at least by the coast in California. There's hot parts of California, too. But uh, batteries come up, and batteries last two to three years here in the Valley. And so if, if you know it's been two years since you bought one last or three years since you bought one last, it's time to think about getting in a shop, get yourself an interstate battery. We prefer interstate batteries at Bumper to Bumper Radio just because simply you can get coverage and warranty coast to coast. Uh, you hardly go past a shop that doesn't carry interstate batteries. So anyhow, when we come back, we're taking your phone calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. Whether you've got a question in regard to tires or anything uh, about your vehicle, give us a call. You listen to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Why wait to experience the resort vacation lifestyle a couple times a year when your family can live it daily at Camelback Golf Club? A limited number of memberships are now being offered, which include 36 holes of golf, no greens fees, discounted guest fees, weekly men's and ladies' member events, private locker rooms, members' lounge, and reciprocal privileges at select Marriott golf facilities. All this as well as discounts on spa and food and beverage at the world-renowned Camelback Inn. An unparalleled membership awaits you at Camelback Golf Club. For information, go to camelbackgolf.com today. This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen from Virginia Auto Service is off in auto shop owner training, uh, so he's not with us today, but... Since he's gone, and he's been gone for a while, and I, I almost I, I feel lonely without him, but I brought in the guys from SNS Tire to help me help you with your car. And these guys, they, they, they know stuff about the rest of the car, but they, they do a lot of tires. So if you guys got tire questions, today is a good day to talk about tires. It's heating up out there. We're going to start to see the carcasses laying on the side of the freeway. So you know, the worst place to be is on the side of the road. And uh, when you guys have a tire that blows out, it's not good. You know, that's why we get those little yellow lights, those tire pressure monitoring lights that come on to keep us safe. And uh, we don't want to ignore those things. And, uh, yeah, side of the road is not good. We've got some phone calls coming in at 602-277-5827. And, uh, guys, let's give our listeners a takeaway, like if there's nothing else in the show they hear today, something about tires that you want them to hear about. Most important, most overlooked. I think I'd go back to that light on the dash that's on. Okay. Um, if it's staring you in the face, just stop in. If uh, if you have a favorite shop that you like to go to, tire shop, otherwise, uh, stop in and have them check your tire pressure. Most everybody will, uh, especially in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper network, will sure. be happy to put a gauge on them and check them. For sure. And, Brad, you look like you had a thought. 
Yeah, yeah, we keep going back to the light. We we all know that there's some vehicles out there that don't have that tire warning pressure light too. So it's good to get your tire pressure checked, you know, once a month at least, and that way you you know you're not wearing out those tires sooner than later. Sure, and it's not a bad idea. And if and the other thing too, I tell people because I'll look at the the tread on the outside of the tire. That doesn't really give you a good picture of what's going on the inside of the tire. And I'll call people up and I'll say, hey, we don't sell tires here at the transmission shop, but just so you know, you need to go to you know, go see a tire store because you got steel cords hanging on your tire. They're like, no, I just looked at those yesterday. They were great. Well, they're not seeing the inside edge of their tire. Right. So if you got a car, you know, at the front of the car, you turn the steering wheel all the way to the left so you can look at the inside edge of the tire, you know, and you want to see nice even wear all the way across the thing, and you want to have steel cords going on. So anyhow, let's get to the phones. We've got, it looks like we've got Greg, we've got Dee Dee, we've got Edward, and we've got Ross. And uh, other open lines at 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Greg in Chandler. He's got an 05 Dodge Dakota. How can we help you, Greg? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good. Uh, listen, um, on my 2005 Dodge Dakota, I've noticed that the transmission, um, especially when it gets a little warm, is shifting funny. Uh, is there... Is that uh, transmission shift electronically, or is it shift manually? What uh, what engine do you have in that? Is that a V6, or is that a V8? Yeah, it's a 3.7, yeah. 3.7 liter. There's a couple different options of transmissions, but any, any transmission built after the early 90s is electrically controlled. So there's a transmission control module that operates the transmission, tells it how and when to shift. So with transmission problems, we run into a t two ways. We run into control problem, so it could be a transmission control problem, or you can actually have a mechanical transmission problem. An 05 Dodge Dakota was notorious for a pattern failure of the transmission control module, and it has, uh -huh. a, lot to, it has a lot to do with temperature. So, I mean, that's something you're going to want to get into a shop and have diagnosed. Now, uh, if it's is it consistent every time you start the car and go drive it, every time it heats up? No. No? Does it happen once a week? Does it happen once a month? How often? You, you, you know, I'll tell you, it was a little warm yesterday, and I was stuck in traffic uh, on I-10, and I had the air running, and the temperature got up a little bit past halfway on the uh, on the temperature gauge. But I noticed the transmission, it, it wouldn't, when I was stepping on the gas, it wouldn't upshift uh, into, like, uh, if I was running in third gear, it wouldn't drop down in the second gear until I put it right down to the floor. Then it would downshift in the second gear. Is the yellow check engine light on at all? Not at all. Okay. Well, the other thing that, that comes up this time of year, and we see it over and over again, and one of the things we sell all the time in a transmission shop to people is fan clutches. When your car heats up, the fan clutch on the motor starts pulling a lot more air. So it's going to make the transmission feel differently, and you end up putting your foot into the throttle a lot more to get it to shift and do different things. So that's one thing that comes up. But also, if, if it's going into a fail-safe where there is an electrical problem, it'll just stick it in third gear, and, and you won't be able to shift. So it won't upshift necessarily, and when you take off from a stop, it won't, it won't downshift where it needs to be. So thanks for the call, 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Dee Dee in Tempe. She's got a 2013 Dodge Journey. How can we help you, Dee Dee? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning. Um, I have a question about my air conditioning, um, particularly the front air. It feels like the the fan will have it all the way up, and then it, it feels like it's fully dying, like it gets slower and slower, and then all of a sudden it remembers that it's supposed to be at the highest and, and jumps back in and starts blowing cold air again. Um, and I can't figure out what's causing it. Does the but it's, does the air the volume of air not so much the temperature, but does the volume of air change, or is it the same amount of air, but it just goes from you know cold to warm, that kind of thing? It's always blowing cold air, um, but it it feels like it's turning itself down. I, it's kind of hard to explain. Sure. And I haven't figured out you know if it's when I'm driving more, if I'm idling more. Is it one of those automatic where you just set it to 75 degrees and it just maintains, or is there a fan speed, one, two, three, four, five? It's a fan speed. Okay. Well, there's going to be, it's kind of a common repair that we see is blower motor resistors. I don't know, you guys have probably seen those in your shop come up from time to time. But that, that switch there, as these, these electric motors, sometimes they start to draw higher amps, they'll burn out the resistor and start to cause a problem there. And it sounds like we may be starting to... <laughs> 
to lose a blower motor resistor or we're having a, a fan that's going bad. So it, especially, you know, it doesn't sound like you've got any temperature issues and the fan motor in the back is going to be different than the fan motor in the front. So more than likely we have a fan motor or a blower resistor that's going bad. So if you need a good shop, you can find them at bumper to bumper radiocom You're in Tempe, so there's Good Works Auto Repair is one of the shops in Tempe. Come down and see me at Tri-City Transmission and Auto Repair. We'd certainly take a look at that for you. And, uh, you know, it's Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> Carrie reminded me. <laughs> You're smiling. You got it, you've got it covered? Got it covered. Got it yep. covered. Brad, you got it covered? Got it covered. Dan? I'm ready. And you guys are way more prepared than I am. <laughs> My wife says, she says, oh, I want to go to Jennifer's for breakfast. Uh, I think that would be nice. So last night we're out to dinner. We called Jennifer's, and they're like, man, we've been booked up for like two weeks. I go, oh, well, what about Olive and Ivy? She goes, oh, that'd be great. So I call there, and they're like, we're way booked up. So I have totally struck out at this point. But I'm going to come up with something, you know, that makes it makes it good. Might, might have to be breakfast in bed for her, I, maybe. I told her that, but she's like, you know, I don't want anything I make at home. I want, like, like really nice pancakes or French toast or something. And I'm not good with the kitchen. Nothing, nothing good happens there. And uh, whenever it's Father's Day, I, I turned it into Father's Day weekend. So... Uh, on Friday, she said, well, it's it's Mother's Day weekend. I said, well, the weekend doesn't start till Saturday. This is still a weekday, honey. <laughs> and she goes, oh, I see how this is played. So anyway, that's one of the things that's coming up. But but uh, it's, it's really, oh, I'm the guy that left my phone on. Sorry about that. That's a rookie air, huh? <laughs> so... Uh, uh, auto repair tires, you know, tires are one of those things that, that, uh, people don't, they don't take, tend to take care of, uh, and, and, and it's, it's a blowout situation or they're caught off guard, but they should be budgeting for it. Correct. I mean, so 40,000 miles, you're going to need a set of tires, you know, quite possibly. Now you guys do alignments. Do you guys do alignment every time you change the tires? We think it's a good idea to at least have it checked. Um, that kind of goes hand in hand with, with tires these days, uh, with our roads the way they are today, it's not hard for, uh, for it to be knocked out. And that's the one thing that people confuse, tire balance and wheel alignment. Now, tire balance, when you guys install it or mount a tire on a wheel, you're going to balance the wheel and the tire together. Uh, but, but alignment is actually making sure the wheels track straight down the road. So they can buy the nicest set of tires, put them on. If they're not tracking down the straight of the road, it's just going to it's just gonna wreck them. They're not going to last 40,000 right. miles. And you're, they're going to get bad gas mileage. I mean, that comes up if your car's towed in and you're chewing up tires, and it's just not rolling down the road efficient. So tires is one of those things. And people come in, they go, my car's shaking. I think it needs an alignment. That's the, the wrong symptom for that, but they, they actually need a, maybe a tire balance as a possibility. So anyhow, when we come back, we're taking more phone calls at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships. And oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side -side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. Your fruit and granola. These bacon and eggs. An ordinary mattress is not soft enough for you, not firm enough for him. 
Enter Sleep Number. You can both adjust the mattress to your perfect firmness, comfort, and support in your Sleep Number setting. You're happy, he's happy, at a price that won't break your budget. Only at a Sleep Number store. Find final clearance pricing on the best bed for couples. Save $900 to $1,200 on select 2016 beds. Find us at one of our eight stores in the Phoenix area, including our newest in Scottsdale. Go to sleepnumber.com for a store near you. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. It's 1130. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. President Trump delivering his first commencement address since taking office at Liberty University today. I encourage the graduates to buck tradition and ignore critics as they pursue careers they love. Being an outsider is fine. Embrace the label because it's the outsiders who change the world and who make a real and lasting difference. And the president delivered his first commencement address at the Lynchburg, Virginia University, founded by the late Reverend Jerry Falwell. Syrian Kurdish forces were closing in Saturday on the de facto capital of the Islamic State group in Syria. They've seized a cotton mill only a few miles north of the city and are clashing with the militant group on a number of fronts. Activists and other members of the Kurdish media are reporting. And now for a check on traffic, here's Mike Daniels in the rmegold.com traffic center. Thanks, Tom. I-10 westbound on Avenue Boulevard, a crash blocking the Avenue Boulevard off-ramp. Check at E.Cam, Mercy Cruise, are on scene. Expect some delays in that area. A wreck at 91st Avenue right here at the I-10 to watch out for. And a crash at Northern Avenue and 13th Street. This report brought to you by Trajan Wealth. Call today to find out about guaranteed 6% growth on your retirement with a 10% upfront bonus. Call 480-990-3300 for more information. I am Mike Daniels, KTAR News. It'll be clear and sunny today. Hot is uh, the expected temperature, 97 the high expected today. We'll see an overnight low around 69 degrees and then clouding up for Sunday with a high of 93. Right now, it's 93 degrees in Goodyear. Weather is brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. KTAR News, winner of three Edward R. Murrow Awards this year for excellence in journalism and breaking news coverage. Because real news matters now more than ever. KTAR News, 92.3 FM, Arizona's news station. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, Goodworks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. Goodworks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at goodworksautorepair.com. Well, welcome. 
Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out. He's at the uh, automotive store owner training. So Matt's always Matt goes to school more than anybody I know. You know, so he, he likes to do a good job. Uh, so anyway, I've got uh, I've got the guys from SNS Tire, and there they have three tire shops, uh, mainly in the West Valley. But uh, they're our go-to for tires when it comes to the Bumper to Bumper Radio Network. And what Bumper to Bumper Radio is, is a show about you guys and your cars. But behind it, there's a website called bumper to bumper radiocom and that's where these guys are listed. And these are auto shops and tire shops, body shops, that Matt and I feel comfortable sending to you. It's just a car- carte blanche recommendation. Go see these guys. They'll take care of it. Because there's nowhere on the list. You know, in town, there's white hats and black hats. And, and I find a lot of shops are good. But any shop here, good people. You can go to, you can get to the owner. You know, Rob, you're you're there if anybody has a problem and they they want to get it taken care of. And you know, I know as lo- as long as I've been around, problems do come up. I, I I wish the world was perfect, but things are going to come up. And it's having open dialogue and being able to talk to somebody to be able to resolve those problems. That cer- certainly has to happen. So it's really good to have you guys here. So Dan, Rob, and then Brad, and they all work at the, you know, you'll find them at one. Of, Brad, you're mostly at the uh, at the location in uh, Sun City West or? Yeah, Surprise, Surprise. Sun City West. And I'm not that familiar with the West Valley because I grew up in the East Valley. I grew up right here at Tatum and Shea right down the street. So Matt and I, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Just uh, we were maybe uh, five years apart. But uh, so anyway, uh, I got a couple texts here in relation to tires and any one of you guys can grab these, but uh, I have the, the question is this. I have a 12,000-pound fifth-wheel trailer. Should I run low-range E truck tires or the ST trailer tires, 235, 75, 16? Any help with that would be great. Thanks. Brad, you look pregnant with thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, w- one thing with going to a light truck tire, you're going to find that uh, it's not going to carry the same rating as a ST tire would, trailer tire. Um, even if you have the same size and same ply rating, load range E, he's talking about a 10 ply there. Um, so that's uh, that, that I wouldn't recommend going that route. Okay. Yeah, when Brad says same rating, I think he means same weight rating. Correct. The weight, the truck tire will carry less weight. L- less weight than the uh, the ST. So ST, what does ST stand for? Special trailer. Special trailer. Oh, man, it's man, rocket science. <laughs> it's an ST tire. So I've got a couple more, and, and I want to get back to the phones because we do have some some people here. But we've got John, we've got Faye, we've got Edward, we've got Ross, and we've got Jimmy. But I want to hit one more of these texts. Uh, this is uh, nitrogen versus regular air in your tires. Any one of you guys take this. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can use either, but uh, there are some definite benefits to nitrogen. Um you see less uh, variation of uh, air pressure um, inside the tire with when you use nitrogen because the the molecule the nitrogen molecule uh, is larger and it doesn't have any moisture uh, any moisture in it. So now they distinguish that with green valve caps. Someone's got a nitrogen filled tire. Now if someone's on the side of the road and they're nitrogen people and they just need to top off their tire. Can they top it off with the regular air? Absolutely. Okay. So there's no reason they can't top off, but when if they're getting their Tires, they may, may consider nitrogen if they're those people who like to have everything as close to perfect as they can get it. <laughs> I think anything you can do to simplify your life is uh, beneficial. Yeah, that is true. Simple is good. So anyhow, let's get to the phones. We're going to go with Jimmy in Phoenix. He's got a 2009 Toyota Camry. How can we help you, Jimmy? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes. Um, hi. I'm calling uh, about a problem with the uh, popping sound of the steering wheel. Uh, it, it seems like it's coming from the cluster and in the front up in the uh, steering wheel. I'm not sure if something has to do with the power steering arm control underneath or it has to do with something else. Can you give me an idea, please? Now, I just want to be clear. So you're hearing this popping noise on the inside of the vehicle, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Now, as far as as far as those kind of noises, and I've seen those kind of noises, uh, one of the things that comes to mind, there's plastic trim that goes around the steering wheel, and sometimes when it gets hotter out and that starts to warp, you'll actually see that trim start to catch the steering wheel, and so you get some popping noises. One way to you know test for that is just put your hand on that on that collar that's around the steering wheel and just squeeze it a little bit, see if you can manipulate it, see if that popping goes away. 
And if it's real consistent, what it's going to take, I mean, if I was diagnosing it, I would sit there and rock the steering wheel back and forth and listen for the popping noise and then maybe have, have you know, someone else rotate the steering wheel back and forth. I might get up and look underneath the dashboard. But there's really no power steering controls on the inside of the vehicle. Underneath the dashboard, there's going to be some splines and where shafts connect and that type of thing. But it's just really going to be a matter of putting your hand on that noise and moving the steering wheel, and when it goes away, you found it. I mean, that's what that would be my recommendation There's on that. Probably an airbag in there too, so you want to be a little careful about that. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good point. So, uh, but if if you have any concerns, find a good shop. If you don't have a good shop that you call home, go to bumper to bumper and uh, it looks like uh, I didn't see what part of it. you're in Phoenix. So you got Virginia Auto Service right there in downtown Phoenix. Not sure what part of Phoenix you are. Last I checked, Phoenix is a pretty big place. <laughs> but anyhow, good luck with that, Jimmy. But I don't think it's related to anything power steering so much because that's all going to be a pump that's underneath the hood and a rack and pinion that's underneath, you know, underneath the hood. So we're going to go with uh, Ross in Mesa. He's got a 2015 Honda CRV. How can we help you, Ross? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. I have a tire pressure monitor question on my CRV. I've had three CRVs. They all have this situation. The sticker says I should put 33 pounds uh, pressure in the tires, but if I do that, the tire monitor like stays on. And I've asked the Honda dealers, and they say, well, we put three to four more pounds of pressure in the tires, and that makes the light go out. But if, and, and they're right. If I do that, it rides like a tank. If I put the 33 pounds in like the sticker recommends, it has a decent ride. What can I do? I would think. Uh, that the dealer may be able to relearn that computer to set that pressure at a lower threshold. Something's not quite right there, in my opinion. Um, well, else? all three CRVs that I've had, a 2007, uh, 13, and this 15, all uh, exhibit that problem. Are you, are you using your personal tire gauge, or is that the tire gauge of others? I've used, I use my own, but I've used others as well. And uh, I still get the same issue. Well, I had a, I had a, I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold. I had a, uh, you know, a Honda Element, which is kind of similar. And I always found my tire pressure to be consistent, you know. So if that light came on, I knew I was two to three pounds low. That's that's when I saw it come on. But you bring up a good point, Rob, is sometimes there's computers where that stuff can be set. Someone can go in and literally change those settings to make it right. So I'm thinking, uh, Ross, that when you go down to the dealer, you should have a you know conversation with them because that that to me just doesn't seem right. You know, like hey, you can't turn the light off with the with the recommended. You know, that that should be something. There's got to be some more information on, and especially if you've had three Hondas. The only thing I was thinking is maybe he's checking with the same gauge for all three Hondas. And how many times do you guys see tire pressure gauges that are no good? Right. Right. You have to calibrate them in your shop all the time because you know they can be off. So maybe we got a tire pressure gauge problem too. That's a possibility that that could possibly exist. We are going to go with Edward in Phoenix. He's got a 1993 uh, Toyota Celica. How can we help you, Edward? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Uh, i got a couple questions. On I have a leaking freeze plug, and uh, it's a difficult one to get back to replace. got to take out the transmission, I guess. Mm-hmm. And the car, yeah. uh, the money, I don't particularly want to put it, the money into it. To uh, fix this, so I kind of have a magical thinking question. I wanted to run by you guys. <laughs> Is there any chemical uh, stop leak that would better would buy me ten thousand miles out of this car? Yeah, I mean, it, basically, you're saying, hey, I don't want to fix this car anymore, and so you can drop back and punt. And there is a product called Aluma Seal. Uh, you can you can dump that in there. Some people actually t- you can take pepper, you know, from your from your kitchen table, and you can pour that in there. And th- yeah, that'll probably maybe stop or slow down the leak. But but you're starting to call doom on the engine at some point because there's all kinds of little ports and passages when you start putting that junk uh, in the you know. So if, if it literally just is a patch, I just want to get another 10,000 miles out of this car. Yeah, you can you can probably do something like that. I don't know, Rob, if anything comes to mind for you. I've heard all kinds of uh, products out there that you can buy that that do advertise that they work. I think they do work, and that's probably what I would try first. And there's also some home remedy type things. I've I've heard of raw eggs 
I mean, before you anybody dumps raw eggs in their radiator, make right. sure you check it out. But <laughs> I think know, I but, saw that in a movie once. Somebody, you know, you know, pouring eggs into but, the radiator. Uh, yeah, I, I I understand what predicament he's in. He doesn't want to spend any money, and that's a big dollar fix. And so oh yeah, try so something cheap first. And that's the thing for people that are listening. Servicing your, you know, we talked about cooling systems last week, and you don't want to ignore them and not take care of them because then you start to get these little problems. People think of buying a radiator for your car. Well, that's that's a bummer. That's expensive. But there's all kinds of freeze plugs around your engine, and some of them take 10 hours worth of labor to get to and replace and all that stuff. And that's a whole lot more expensive than a radiator. And that's a byproduct of the fact that this car is that many years old and probably has had acidic coolant over the years. So having good coolant in your system is, you know, is a big deal for sure. So uh, let's see if we can sneak in one more phone call. I heard this. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was appropriate for you guys since you're in the, in the tire business. <laughs> so anyhow, well, we've got we've got John, we've got Edward, and we've got Dale, and maybe time for another one at 602-277-5827. We'll be right back. Ouch. Being out of tune is no fun and maybe even a little painful. Hi, this is Lee Weatherby owner of Accurate Automotive in Mesa. At Accurate, we are a family-owned and operated one-stop automotive repair shop that specializes in building long-term relationships that are in tune with your needs, not ours. We've been recognized nationally as one of the top shops in the country, but for over 20 years, our priority has stayed focused on providing quality automotive service and repair at a fair price. I invite you to come in and see the difference an in-tune relationship can make for you and your car. With our free courtesy inspection, a $49 value, we feel it is well worth our investment in you because we believe good long-term relationships start early with your first walk through our doors. Accurate Automotive, home of friends serving friends, just off Broadway and Robson in Mesa since 1992. For more information, check us out online at accurateautomotiveaz.com today. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Wine Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Fix it or forget it. This is the show that will help you decide what to do with your car. Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. Matt Allen is out. So we've got the gentleman from SNS Tire. They're a uh, tire and auto repair shops. There's three. They have three locations in the West Valley. And they're our network go-to when it comes to tire questions. Uh, and they're good guys. And if you guys are thinking, hey, I do need a set of tires. And, and one of the things in my mind, I think of cars and the age of car and the life cycle of car. You know, if you bought a new car two, three years ago, you're right there at that first set of tires, 30 to 50,000 miles, somewhere in there. And if it's been six or seven years since you bought the car, maybe you're ready for set number two. I'm a big proponent of replacing four tires all at once. I just... You know, instead of two here, two there, especially with all-wheel drives, because we, you know, we mentioned it earlier. Do you guys still sell two tires at a time? Yeah, of course we do. I mean, it just depends on the situation. Right. Um, a lot of it depends on who's driving the car and how how important is it for that car to be, you know, drive perfect. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to drive as good with mixed match tires on it. Right. So minimum two at a time. Now, if you have an all-wheel drive car, you're stuck. You have to buy four at a time. There's no... No real way around it. You think you might be able to get away with it because of the same size and the same brand and everything. But we literally have a stagger gauge in our shop because we're diagnosing these problems often with these all-wheel drive cars. And the stagger gauge literally measures the circumference of the wheel. 
and if there's a half inch variation of circumference. The other way to do it is to put a chalk mark on all the tires and drive it across the parking lot and see where they end to see if they're the same size. Um, that would be another way to do it. But uh, we find we people we have people in our shop all the time that buy two tires, and the next thing we know, they're getting transfer case repair. And they're not exactly cheap, so you want to avoid that if you can. It looks like we've got Dale and John and I think Sry uh, with a uh, 2014 Honda Odyssey, but we're going to go with John in Sun City. He's got a 2014 Honda CRV. It's CRV day, or maybe we already talked to you. Hey, John, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How can we help you? Yes, hi. I have a 2014 CRV, and uh, I have 24,000 miles on my tires, but one of my tires constantly goes low, and I keep filling it up, and I can't find anything wrong with the tire. If I replace one tire, is that good, or do you have to replace all the tires, even though I have 24,000 miles on them? Hey, John, i got a quick question for you. On your CRV, is it all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive? Two-wheel. Okay. And uh, I bet you one of these guys is going to know your answer, so I'm going to put you back on hold. I would be willing to bet you that we could find out what's, what's wrong with that tire and why yeah. it's leaking. It's going to be a tire, a wheel, a valve stem. Um, and we submerge them in water. It's no rocket science there either. We just submerge them in water. Before I replace that tire, I'd have a couple of places check it. Yeah, and to make we'd be happy to check it for you. Take it off, submerge it in water. Got to have really good vision to find some of those real slow leaks, but uh, our guys are really trained at that. So uh, before you go out and buy any tires, give us a chance to try to find that leak for you. Yeah, and you're in Sun City, so there, you just look up S&S Tire, uh, or you can go to bumper to bumper com, and that's bumper to to bumper radio.com you'll find these guys and uh, i'd be willing to bet that you guys will be able to find a leak in that tire hey you know we love to sell tires but only when it's necessary right. i mean if we can find the problem we feel like that's yeah. that's what we're all about it's more about the challenge sometimes, it is you know <clears throat> my first job was changing tires so i remember sitting over that dunk tank and just going around real slow if you had a slow leak or you know that type of thing or uh, they, remember the fix-a-flat products? You know, we were talking about fixing that guy's leak from his freeze plug. Fix-a-flat, yes or no, what do you guys think? I'd stay away from it, especially now with TPMS sensors. Mm -hmm. It really fouls those things up. And it's flammable. That, uh, that yeah, so fix-a-flat's flammable. It could be very, very, very tempting, but don't do it. Not a, not a good thing. Emergencies only. Yeah, only, only in desperate times. We're going to go with Dale in Mesa. He's got a 2000 Ford Taurus station wagon. How can we help you, Dale, with your Christmas vacation car? All right. Um, when I uh, put in gas, I have to squeeze it like 30 times to uh, get a gallon of gas in, so I use a funnel. Uh, it's an inconvenience. It's a second car, dogs, swap meets, whatever. Um, is that dangerous, or is it just an inconvenience? Well, you, you shouldn't have to do that. You're saying if you use a funnel, you're able to fill it up better. Right, right. Okay. These, yeah, but, you know, 30 squeezes for, you know, it, it's just like a, oh, I don't know, a four-tenths of a gallon every squeeze. And, um, you know, I don't use it all that often, but, uh, you know, it's kind of a pain. Yeah, and this is kind of, a, this is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, you know, these cars... The, the uh, environmental, you know, we don't want fuel uh, fumes going into the atmosphere. So these cars have a charcoal canister system. And so there's vapors that are going to come out of your gas tank when you fill it up. So it's either, it's got to, if you put gas in, air, air has to come out. And so there's something not working there as far as the ventilation goes. There's, there's vent valves and uh, some of that will go into the charcoal system. And I don't know exactly how the uh, gas pump does it, but a lot of that is is captured by the you know the, by the gas pump, so it's doing that. So you're skipping all that because something is broken. So it's not as much an incon it, that would be super inconvenient to me. Even with that would drive me crazy. Even with an extra vehicle, I, I would not want I, to. The first thing I check is the is the vent return coming from the gas tank. Yeah, to see. To see what's going on there. Older car, I didn't catch the year. It was a 2000 Ford Taurus. And I think the one from Christmas Vacation was probably 96. Carrie, you're nodding your head. It's probably a 96 or something like that. But uh, his front wheel drive sleigh. But that's immediately what came to my mind when he said Ford, uh, Ford Taurus station wagon. But there definitely is something going on there. And, and it may not be hard for, uh, you know, 
for a, a mechanic who's trained to see, to spot something out of the, the ordinary, or we've got a you know plugged up line or something in the VIN system is not working. So something that should be addressed. Uh, but this was interesting. We were talking last week is that there's more emissions given off of that car sitting there, that raw fuel you know coming off the car, those fumes, than actually what comes out of the tailpipe. And most people don't know that. So everyone's got that evap that evap code stored in their in their car, and it turns on the check engine light, and they, people think of it as the gas cap code. But that system is completely designed not to put gas vapors out in the atmosphere. So that's what that's all about. We're going to go with, I think I got your name right, Sarai in Phoenix. He's got a 2014 Honda Odyssey. How can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thanks for taking my call. Um, so I have a 2014 Honda Odyssey, and uh, I have a typical, actually, some sound coming from rear suspension. When I'm driving at low speeds, taking a slow slight left or right turn. Okay, when I'm driving uh, from the driveway or getting into the driveway or taking a slight right turn and apply the brakes, it's so loud that I can't ignore it. Took it to the dealer multiple times. They changed the emergency brakes and then they looked at suspension. Everything seems to be fine, but it keeps coming back and it's not going away. And I have audio multiple recordings of that. And I, I'm, I'm tired actually taking it back. Dealer is willing to work, but I don't know. They're not solving it for for good. Hey, Sri, are you able to jump in the car and drive it with the technician from the dealership? Yeah, I did that actually. So yeah, they they were able to look at it, and then they said emergency brakes. I know there's some of the Honda artists have this problem. You know, they, they don't, there's no technical bulletin for this. But I mean, it came back. Like after I took it to the dealer for a service, and then like bring it back. For a few days, it'll be okay, and after that, it comes back. And even today, actually, I drive the same vehicle, and it's it's there. I mean. So they said they'll reach out to uh, Honda to find out if there is anything going on. I haven't heard back. They're willing to work with me, but it's been there like for all, almost like last 25 or 30,000 miles that I've driven. Is it, is it a screeching noise? Is it a growling noise? What kind it's of noise? Actually, is it? It's a squeaking noise. Like kind of, I, mean, it's, I have a recording. I, mean, I can send it to you if you want, actually, on a like, yeah, um, you know, actually go to go to our website bumper to bumper radio.com. There's a contact link there. Uh mm -hmm. and, and start an email conversation with us and uh if you got some recording of noises and uh that's that's one of those things that goes on in our shops that, that we all and the reason I asked if he was able to go for a ride with the technician is that that's the if you have a noise that you're fighting, that's the most important thing you can do is jump in the car with a technician. But I gotta imagine how many two thousand fourteen Hodesseys are on the road. I mean there's literally got to be, I mean, hundreds of thousands. I mean, there's tons of these things. I can't believe it's that hard to find a brake squeak or a brake squeak or a wheel bearing or something going on there. Maybe it's a noisy CV joint. You're just going to have to find the right shop that's willing to just hunker down and, and get this thing figured out because it shouldn't shouldn't be that complicated. Noises can be tough, but uh, you just got to, I think you got to not raise your voice, but just say, hey, I am fed up with this thing. It can't be that hard to fix a noise on, on the rear of my, you know, but I'm not looking at it, so maybe it is that hard. I don't know. So anyhow, thanks for joining us. Thanks, uh, Rob, Brad, and Dan Slagle for coming in from SNS Tire uh, to, to keep us informed on tires. Thanks, Brie, for running the dials. It is Mother's Day weekend, not just Mother's Day, Mother's Day weekend. So they own the whole weekend. So make sure to reach out to your mother. I think moms, I think I wouldn't be as sensitive if I did not have a mom. My mom gave me the sensitivity gene that I would otherwise be missing. So if you're looking for a friendly, honest, competent shop like SNS Tire, you can find them at bumpertobumperradio.com. And while you're there, be sure to like us on Facebook. Remember never to text and drive. We'll see you next week. <laughs>